Hello and welcome to our webinar. I'm Andre of Zebra BI and this is the price volume mix variance analysis in Power BI and Excel. I hope that this will be an interesting topic today because many people are actually struggling to calculate the price volume mix variance analysis in Power BI and um, also in Excel basically. However, this is a very important analysis that can um, add uh, a completely new dimension in your business reporting, in your business analysis, um, in your dashboards, either in Excel or in, in Power BI. So uh, hopefully this will be something new for everybody um, or maybe it will just simply enlighten certain parts of, of, of this topic. Uh, to those of you who are already using this, um, either in Excel or in Power BI. Typically, um, a business dashboard and, and a good business dashboard uh, tries to explain the variance to previous year or the, to variance to plan or to a forecast and, and so on. Um, and this goes for the revenue, for gross profit, uh, for you know income, all the important KPIs that you may have. So. This is a typical. This is a typical thing here. We have um, um, we have a variance, and then we explain the variance, you know, by business unit, by product, by um, uh, month, by client, and so on. So all the data fields that you have, basically, you know, you try to break the variance down, explain it, and then observe where which are the items uh, like products or or um, business units and so on that contributed positively or negatively to the total variance here, right? But uh, there's uh, a new way, there's another way, uh, another insight that you can add, and this is the price volume mix analysis, okay? Where you have your variance, like in my example here from you know 2018 to 2019, there was 5.5% uh, growth in the revenue, and now the breakdown here is by a different criteria. So now I um, now I have calculated that this growth here, right, comes from different sources. And one source is the price change, right? So if we um, if we were selling certain products uh, last year and now we are selling them also this year, but we have increased the prices, right? or decrease the prices, how did this affect the uh, total sales, for example, or revenue, or even better, gross profit, right? Uh, so this is the, the price change. And then the volume change, so are we selling more in terms of quantities? So did we sell uh, more items of the same product uh, last year uh, or less? And, and so on, and what is then the total effect, the total change due to the volume um, increases or, or, or increases, right? What's the, the, the impact of, of the volume change, right, on the total revenue? So this is this, and then there's this third mysterious uh, <laughs> a category called the mix, um, uh, which also explains the third part. So the mix is, is, uh, is actually, adds another insight it's not it's uh, the mix it's is not about the prices it's it's not about the volumes per se but it's actually the mix explains how did the change in the structure of your products so basically your product product mix how did this affect the total revenue are you selling higher value products this year than the last year, then the mix will be, you know, positive, right? So you have a better portfolio, better portfolio, the portfolio that is more profitable, for example, or 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 simply higher value. You sell more products, uh, more products in terms of numbers, um, uh, with higher prices, for example. So you have a better product mix if this is growing, right? Um, so these are the three typical um, and I would say basic categories in this variance analysis that everybody is trying to, to, to calculate. However, um, now you have a lot of versions of that. So instead of just analyzing 
the growth from previous year, you can um, analyze the change from, from the budget. So, so um, instead of the previous year, I could have a budget here, and then I would have exactly the same calculation. I just changed the previous year to, to my budget. And instead of doing this on the revenue, um, it's actually uh, even better if you can do it on your contribution margins or on your gross profit. Um, um, and because it will actually uh, become even more powerful. Plus, uh, you do not have to just stay with those three categories, price, volume, mix, um, because there are other drivers of your business. Uh, for example, uh, the two typical ones are, are you adding new products? Are you launching new products um, uh, in your, to, uh, you know, in, in your business? So, um, have you introduced this year some new products that had no sales last year, but this time they do, right? Because of course this will grow your your business, right? So, so you can also um, identify the revenue that, that was achieved with new products. But of course, also maybe you you have discontinued certain products like. Uh, then you can add this to this analysis as well. So that's why I have you know, five categories right now. And then you can also see, all right, are we adding this? Are we adding more new products, uh, um, uh, more revenue from new products, new launches, than you know, we lose from discontinued products? Is this healthy or not? Um, do we have a good situation with prices? Are, are our prices going up and down? And how exactly is the effect of those of the price policy on your revenue or gross profit? Even better, uh, are we selling more more than our competitors? Are we gaining market share in terms of volume in, the, in terms of sold items? Right. So this would be the the, the volume and then the mix. Uh, do we have a better product mix, uh, you know, more valuable products in our sales, uh, in our product portfolio, for example. Okay. And so this is the topic for today. Um, ben, we'll show this in Excel. We'll explain the calculations. Uh, we will show how to do it in Power BI because in Power BI, it can get even more um, powerful because of all the cool features of, of Power BI, which is very interactive. Uh, um, and um, you can do the drill downs and, 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 and stuff. So, so this can become an extremely, extremely powerful tool that I think every business analyst should actually add to, to, to their toolboxes um, and just use it in, in your, you know, just ad hoc analysis or uh, include this in your monthly reports or even or maybe quarterly or or, or annual or, or something but you know um this is chronically missing and um yeah um many times the calculations are also wrong right so uh we'll see there are a couple of issues with the uh calculations so so this part of explaining the formulas how what they mean and then how to do them is also an important part of this uh webinar all right Quick introduction before we dive into the topic. Um, I'm Andre, the founder at, at, at Zebra BI and, and the Microsoft Most Valuable uh, Professional. I'm also a uh, Hikert IBCS um, certified uh, consultant. So I've done this on, on many, many projects before and hopefully, um, you know, some of my uh, learnings that were quite hard, actually, I must say, on, on this topic <laughs> will uh, save the time for, for you guys, guys out there. I'm very special, uh, happy today that we have a special guest. Actually, my colleague is here, uh, Tine, uh, colleague Tine, who will help me, will assist me with the webinar, our new um, BI consultant at Zebra. Tine, uh, Tine, would you say hi to everybody, please? Hello, everybody. Um... I'm very happy to be here, Andre. Um, yeah, as mentioned, I'm Tino Zimic. I work as a B, uh, BI consultant at Zebra BI. And uh, I'm really happy that so many of you have joined today's session. Um, I think we have a really cool topic ahead of us. Uh, also, I would like to use this opportunity to, to encourage you to pose us any questions, remarks um, that we can address during the presentation or uh, at the end of the webinar during the Q&A. 
Um, so yeah, uh, that's it from my side. Um, let's now uh, jump to the presentation. Uh, Andre, the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tine. Thanks. Yeah, do keep your, your questions coming. Just type them in the questions box. Uh, we'll do a Q&A uh, at the end. And also we are recording this session and uh, so um, hopefully uh, Tine will, will uh, help me this time with the questions. Uh, thanks, Tine. Okay, so um, we'll first take a look how to do the calculations in Excel and we will check a few options here uh, and also a few methods and their you know, good sides and, and, and bad sides of, of the different versions um, of, of those calculations. And then uh, we will switch to Power BI. Uh, Power BI also explain how to prepare the data. This data, what kind of data set do you need to do this in Power BI? And also explain the formulas in Power BI. Um, and we'll do that with uh, the DAX. Uh, so um, I must say that it's not uh, rock and science. Some formulas are quite simple in DAX. Um, some of them are more complicated maybe, but it's it's not a rocket science, I think. Um, also, we'll include some, some um, power query, um, uh, but more or less basic things. And everything that you see, so the, the PBIX files, Excel files will be uploaded. So um, yeah, they will be available for you to, to download and just use them as, um, as your templates. So in the end, maybe you will be able to do cool things like this, not just have the analysis, but for example, in Power BI, if you have some yeah, good growth uh, because of you know, vol good volume change, volume variance, where does it come from? Exactly from which products? You know, who are, what are the top products that contributed to this? What, what's inside this box or this box, right? Um, then do things like, um, you know, present this um, over several product groups, you know, do things like, um, all right, this is my analysis, this is in my Power BI model, but then in the end, if you also do the right model in Power BI, then you can just simply take your product groups, move them, uh, you know, just drop them in and you will have the view for all of your product groups, uh, right? Or do it by, by another data field, for example. So um, yeah, we'll show some. Uh, we'll show you how, how to do this, how to prepare the model here, but first the basics, right? First, we need to go back to Excel and just talk about the basics. Um, how, what actually do you need, um, do you need uh, to create your first uh, price volume mix variance analysis and how do you do it? Um, um, let's do this in Excel. So I will just show you a picture just to, um, all right. So the uh, data requirements uh, for Excel actually, but even more importantly for Power BI. So what do you need uh, in order to start? Um, you need, well, the minimum, I would say you need some products. Okay, so you need, so you need this data by product. And this can be um, this can be um, products uh, on on a ba most basic levels like SKUs, uh, you know, um, uh, each and every product, or they can be product groups, or you can even have a hierarchy like product groups, products, and then maybe even maybe some some other data fields. But the product part, of course, is quite important. Um, in, in, you can't do this without your products, and then you need. Uh, your sales by product. Um, and there are now two ways how to do this. You can have, so definitely you need the revenue. Um, so I just marked revenue AC, AC stands for actual. So, right, this is my actual revenue, for example, for, for this year. And then, uh, then beside that, you need revenue for previous year. And then you need your quantities. So the quantities, uh, the number of items sold by each product, uh, and this can be like in kilograms, in in you know number of items or whatever your your unit is, but it needs to be in the same unit. And then you need the quantity for this year and quantity for previous year. 
All right, so this is if you're doing the analysis, you know, the, the variance analysis from previous year. If you're doing this for the plan, then you need your revenue, uh, your actual revenue, and then your revenue that was planned, and then also the, the quantity, the actual quantity, and the planned quantities, planned quantities, right? So if you do have, if you also plan quantities by product, then you can do this in exactly the same way as I will show now, also for the, the plan, okay? Uh, but many times people, unfortunately, they don't have the, you know, plan by, uh, they, they don't plan the, the volumes, um, the quantities, right, by, by product. Uh, but if you do, very good option to include this analysis for the plan as well. So this would be uh, the, the minimum requirement for, for this analysis. I would say um, it will be easier for start if you can just bring two columns uh, next, to, next to one another. So like revenue, actual revenue previous year, and then quantity, actual quantity previous year. This is just easier to start with. But if you will uh, simply uh, export your data from some sales system or, or something like that, then you would probably have it in a slightly different format. So instead of having two columns, revenue, actual revenue previous year, you will actually, you will just have the revenue and the quantity. And then you will have some sort of a date field. And then you will calculate from, from the date, you will calculate the previous year's value. So especially in Power BI, this is probably, you know, uh, a more normal situation, but both ways work. Okay, so this is what you need. And now let's go to Excel. Now I have the uh, almost exact same data set here. And I will show you first one method that is uh, very popular um, uh, in, in, in literature and in, um, you know, just out there in, in the, um, on the internet. Um, I just called it the mix change method. <laughs> I just invented the name. Um, and um, I must say that um, many of these uh, ways, methods of calculation are um, slightly problematic and it's very easy to discuss them. Is this okay? Is this not okay? And there are lots of you know pros and cons. Um, and uh, I will just start with this one and then we'll move on to another one, which I personally believe is actually much, much better. Okay, so, and I will explain the difference. So now I have my product products. Actually, I have some product groups here. This is now my revenue from previous year. And this is my revenue, my sales this year. So certain products are increasing uh, like this, the, the sales goes up. Sometimes it goes down like in dairy products here and so on. Then I also have the quantities. Okay, quantity previous year, quantity this year. Um, okay, and then I have the, the uh, price. Okay, so the price, first of all, um, uh, first of all, this price here, uh, you simply, um, this is, it's, it's actually not completely okay to call it price, it's more revenue per unit, right? So you basically, um, I just see that maybe maybe I should uh, check uh, quantity. So the typical situation would be, let me just quickly do this. So actually the values. So you would actually first just calculate the average um, average price or um, revenue per um, revenue per unit. So let's let's do this like revenue divided by the quantity, all right, so this is my actual. So this is now the same. I just had the values here. Now I'll just replace them with, with, with formulas, right? So, okay, something like that. And you do the same for the price, right? Actual, so, so for this year, also my revenue for this year divided by the quantity. So I have those prices and then you do like this. And then you, this, you do the same also on the total, right? So on the total, on the total, you will just have the average average price across across all of uh, this, but it's not calculated as average of 
of those prices, it's actually calculated from the total. So on the on the on the level of the total, right? And if you would have um, further subtotals in between, like further product categories or or, or um, programs or something, you would do the same. So you would just calculate the average by dividing your total revenue divided by quantity, right? So this is an, an average on this level. Um, okay. So these are now the prices. So already from this, with, with, we, we can calculate the price change. So price change is simply um, is simply um, the difference between the prices. So my price this year is 8.99 and uh, I subtract 8.32. So my price went up for 0. 0. 0.6 something, right? So, so this is my um, change in the price. So this is the first part here. Let me zoom in. Can I do this? even more so the price here all right so this part here is simply the change in the price okay for each and every product separately and then i multiply this by the actual quantity all right so so basically i take the the change in the prices multiply this by the number of units um, sold in this year and this is my price change, okay? All right. And this is now for the first um, product. Um, all right, for baby food and baked goods and so on. So as you see, I have some positive price change because certain prices went up like baby food. Um, yeah, we are selling baby food, you know, um, for better prices now, uh, but in certain categories, yeah, the price was, you know, is declining. So I have some negative effect. So uh, exactly $22,000 uh, or euros, right? Um, uh, have we lost uh, because of the declining prices in my baked goods category, for example, and so on and so on. And then quite importantly, in the end, for the totals and for the subtotals, you need to um, you need to uh, calculate the total, just, just sum up everything on the level of the total or subtotals, okay? So you calculate the price change for each and every product uh, as, as low as possible, right? Ideally, on the level of the product, SKU number, okay? And then you simply aggregate, aggregate the total, um, uh, the, the price change level by level. You sum it up, okay? You do not operate with average prices here on, on the total and on the subtotals, right? For the price change, okay? Um, then uh, the volume change, and now we get to the tricky part. Um, okay, uh, uh, the tricky part is, uh, you know, how to separate the volume effect from the mix effect. So let me first explain what the mix actually is. The mix variance uh, is because your product mix, your product portfolio has changed, okay? Um, and you have sold, so, so like um, the, uh, the, uh, the mix, my mix previous year is here in this column, which means that, for example, we were selling Last year, this is my mix last year, previous year, and my mix this year, mix actual, right? So, so last year we were selling 5.1% um, um, in terms of uh, volume, in terms of quantities, 5.1% uh, uh, baby food products within the whole um, um, within the whole product uh, portfolio. Okay, so out of 100, right, out of 100%, 5% was baby food. And now, this time, in my, uh, this year, this has changed. So we are selling more baby food this year, okay? More baby food this year, uh, which can be good or bad, 
right? But depending, depending on, depending on, on what, how valuable are is this is this product? Is this is this a, a more profitable product? Is this a product where where I have higher prices? Okay, um, then uh, you know the effect. Then then the change will be positive. But um, if we are selling more products that are now cheaper or less profitable, uh, right? Uh, this change in my product portfolio. Uh, actually had a negative impact okay so the mix in the end will tell you whether you have a better product portfolio or product mix right so for example in my baby food it looks like my that my mix is positive all right so so it's better than the last year meaning we are selling more products the number um, um, more uh, the quantity is of uh, high priced products here in this product category is higher okay now how to calculate this um there are there are a lot of a lot of methods so uh i just chose to um include the first one here and then i'll move on to another one which i actually think is better but this uh this one takes the change of the mix so you see i have mixed previous year mix uh, here so 0 0.26 is the difference in the structure in the portfolio share between previous year and uh, this year so this is the change so i will multiply something with this change okay so you first you need to uh, calculate uh calculate the percentage which is simply you know the number of the quantity quantity of my baby food here the first row with the total right so this is just the simple share then you calculate the change and now this change will go into my formula for the mix okay and then the rest of the formula is um it looks slightly complicated but uh, we will send out the excel so you will have it but basically what you do is uh the basic idea here is uh first of all you calculate the um average price average price which actually would be or average quantity per average quantity um, um uh, average revenue average revenue per unit right so so you take the sum of your revenue and you do this you do this for um uh for previous year okay so what was the last year uh the average and this is this so this is my this is my average here and this is what goes in here right and then you take the quantity of this year and you divide it by the uh, by the difference by the difference in the price of each um product right um uh, each 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 product um, um uh, minus this average price so basically you just uh, just think of it as um, having the average price and then you're just looking at uh has the price is is the price uh, of the baby food here uh, higher than this average price, okay? Which means that uh, this particular product is, you know, one of the higher priced, uh, higher priced um, products. And if we sell more of them, um, then also we will have more revenue, okay? And then if the the the, the change in this price if my you know this one for example has a very low price only 2.15 euros so this is lower than my average right so when you subtract this um this is um this has very low prices so um when i will um um multiply this uh with this seven percent you know increase in the mix i will get some negative effect here all right this is because we are selling more of those cheap products okay that's it um okay and then the formula is inside all right now this is 
uh, a method that works with you know uh, most data sets uh, but I think it's not completely okay so you have all the formulas here uh, let me just move on and uh, now I will present just the another way which is instead of instead of calculating the mix in this way through the the average price and you know observing the the difference of each product's price to this average price we don't do an, any of that uh, the mix will simply be a subtraction in in the end so we will first calculate uh, the price change the price change is exactly the same as i said and then I also introduced here two new categories, the new and discontinued, where simply we, we simply observe, this is of course one method, right? Depending on uh, the product status, status right? Is, is this an active product that we were selling last year and we're still selling this year, right? Um, or is this a new product? So there was no sales last year, but we have sales this year, and then we have the discontinued product okay so um, and in my example here I'm simply checking the the value is the value zero last year or this year and then if last year it was uh, if the last year was zero um, and this year we have some revenue then all of this revenue goes under the new um, revenue uh, due to new product releases new launches right and similarly for the discontinued okay so this is this, these two are very simple. The price is straightforward as before. Now, what we will change now in this method, which by the way, um, is recommended by the Controller uh, Academy. And I would like to thank uh, Dietmar Pascher <laughs> for the great discussions regarding this topic. Um, okay. Um, the volume here is simply, um, uh, the, the, uh, we change the method how to, uh, calculate the volume change okay so the volume change uh, is again uh, is 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 uh, simple we um, take well we just check first we check whether this is a product that is active so so we just exclude exclude the new and discontinued right because you don't want to double things here so so if it's new then it does not go uh, from in, under the volume. Okay, at least in my example here, you can change this around, but but for me, uh, in, in this example, the volume means the, the volume change from the active products as opposed to the new and, and discontinued. Okay, so the uh, quantity, and we take simply, we simply take the uh, quantity, uh, the, the, the change in the quantity, so quantity this year minus quantity previous year, Right, so this is the change in the number of items that we have sold, and then we simply multiply this by the average price uh, from previous year, or average revenue per unit previous year. You see here, just price. So it's a very, very simple thing, but, uh, and so then you have the price change and the volume change, and then you will always have, the, the mix will always be zero, on your um, um, uh, on your lowest level. So when you have a product, you cannot have you, you cannot have any mix on the the product level on the SKU level, right? Because product mix means uh, the change in the products within a certain group or in your total product portfolio. Okay, so this is where, where most people uh, get it wrong and it becomes slightly confusing, right? But on the base level, you should not have any mix. Okay, the change uh, and the complications uh, is then here on the level of the total or on the level of the subtotal because now on the subtotal or on the total, you are doing it um, you still have basically the same formula, so it looks very complicated here just because of the names, but you still, you take the total quantity, um, the difference in the total quantity previous year, uh, quantity actual minus previous year, the change in the quantity, and this time you multiply this with the average price, okay? 
And this is now a difference from the previous method. So this time, I'm not just adding up all the volume changes from my products to my product group, but, but rather on the level of the group or on the total. Uh, I multiply it with the average revenue per unit, with the average price. Okay, and I get um, and I get the change in the volume uh, as 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 it would be if you had uh, an average price. Okay, and this is how it's calculated. Okay, and this is to exclude. This is this is what actually ensures that you are excluding the effect of the prices uh, in the volume uh, variance when you do it. Right. So, uh, but because then um, uh, you will get a slightly different uh, volume change on the uh, level of a group. And that's why this then appears in your mix. Okay, then this appears in your mix because the mix is then simply uh, your total variance, revenue actual minus revenue previous year. And then looks very complicated here. <laughs> Uh, just because of the uh, Excel formula references here, but it's basically a revenue actual minus uh, minus revenue previous year, my total variance, and then minus, and then I just sum up everything else. So it's just basically the total variance minus uh, price variance minus volume variance minus new minus discontinued products. What is left? This is my mix. Okay. Um, which is the formula is exactly the same here. So uh, this is this is much easier to read, right? So so you can check here. Um, okay, so it's exactly the same formula, and it's exactly the same formula on each level. So again, this time here, you are not aggregating mixes from the product level to the next level. That's important in Power BI, right? So when, whenever you try to automate this, you need to make sure. You need to understand where do you uh, aggregate uh, from the base level and where do you calculate on, on, on each and every level. And basically, you just aggregate the price changes and then the new and, and, and discontinued products, right? The volume you uh, calculate separately from the average prices on each and every level, and you do the same for the mix. Okay, and then you will get uh, your final result. Now I have my revenue from previous year. I have my revenue from from my actuals, my actual revenue this year, and then I have all of my um, I have my price change, volume change, new, discontinued, and my mix. Okay, um, and this then is. Um, shown here uh, in a Zebra BI um, uh, waterfall chart for, for Excel. So if you, if you are able to do this, calculate this in Excel, you know, you can simply uh, enter a chart like this, and you can then use it, use it anywhere. I would, uh, one thing that I would um, recommend here is all right first of course just clean the clean the labels uh, maybe one decimal place and then make sure that you also uh, enable the difference highlight okay on if you're using the zebra bi charts you can do this uh, so that you have also the total variance uh, from previous year to this year and you can display the label absolute or relative or, or both okay so okay all right, the hard part is this. This was the hard part. Uh, once you have this, you can also uh, use this data on each product on each product level. Let me make this slightly bigger. Okay. So now you see. Now, now I just simply um, took all all of my basic basic data previous year price change, volume change, mix for all the products, and then you can. Uh, you can do this analysis for all the products at once. Okay, um, so uh, if you're using the Zebra BI uh, add-in for Excel, um, just make sure that you bring everything into just one table like that. Just provide links here, and then um, just you know uh, create the uh, so-called small multiple. Okay, 
like like this. Um, again, clean it clean it up. So on every chart, okay, something like that. And uh, yeah, don't forget the difference highlight. I think in this case it, it's really meaningful. All right, now I have uh, a lot of products, and then you know you need to make sure that you fit them into uh, into your space. So, for example, uh, you can use the uh, move report function, like the, the snap move. We call this snap move. Just simply tell Zebra where to put this, and now you have everything. So, so you can see. I mean, the power of this analysis is quite. Uh, it's it's very insightful. Now, now you see for every fruit and veggies, uh, you know, for every product category, uh, are we, you know, is there a price battle? And if the prices are going down, are we selling more? Are we pushing? And then the mix, you know, are we selling more um, high-priced or more profitable products here or, or not? Like in this case, for example, cereals, wow, uh, the, the change in the product mix uh, is, is what uh, you know, is pushing this product category forward, right? So we are definitely selling more high value uh, products within this product category, according to this data. Okay, I hope this was understandable. <laughs> that's, the, that's really the hardest part. And now it's time for me to move on to uh, Power BI. And uh, um now that we have all the uh, uh all the formulas i will not um i will not again go through all the formulas but i will definitely show you how how to do it um so my source for this data um can i quickly bring it in i'll just show you here in my power bi so or uh, let's just open this really quick real quick so this is my data source for now. I just use the, the 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 simple option here where I also where I already have some revenue previous year revenue actual. I have four col columns here, um, and then I have some product groups and products and country. Okay, this is my source, and I just loaded this from from Excel uh, for now for this demo. And now you go to um, uh, let's go to our power query. Um, I will try to highlight a few important parts here now. First of all, so this is my this is my data source is here. You see, this is my original Excel table. So what I did here is um, okay. This will be my sales data. So what I did on top of this is I have um, separated my products from this table, okay? So this is quite important, and I will just show you a really quick way how to do it. Uh, Right-click on your sales table, and this, this is only if you have one sales table where, where you have all the columns, like products and everything in, in one table, right? And many times people do that. Uh, so if you have this, then just separate the products. From this and uh, an easy way in power query is just to reference to this so create a reference to to your sales table like i did just now then double click to rename it and this will be my product table product um, i already have my product product table let's just call this products too for now okay and basically you just need the products and the product groups okay this is what you need because this will become my dimension of products okay everything else you can remove here so just right click remove columns ah sorry remove other columns uh, okay um let's do this again so not remove the, those two remove other columns okay everything except this and then uh, right click once more and um do the remove duplicates 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 okay so now now you're sure that you have only the products and this will be now your product table okay and then when you go back to your sales model 
you will have your sales table, but then you will have a separate product table, okay? And you then, you need to make sure that you link it, uh, that this relationship is one to many. This is now one to one, just because uh, I have a uh, very basic demo, demo data. Uh, but uh, if you do this on, on the right data, then it should be okay. Um, okay, so uh, just fix this to, um, you know, one to many and uh, single. Okay, so this is how it should look like. Now you have a separate products table. And now what is important now? Uh, now you will have your quantity, you will have your revenue, you will calculate your price. This is very simple how to calculate the price. Just simply divide. Uh, so that would be the average price or average revenue per unit. Just divide revenue and uh, by quantity, okay? And um, and then if you do it with divide, then you can have zero at the end. So you know, um, just to handle the division by zero, or use the blank um, uh, the blank function here instead of the zero, which is uh, actually more more or less uh, a better way, I say. Uh, then the price for this year, okay. Then you have the price change, okay. Price change is just simply now, it's just uh, the difference in the price. And now then the variance, which is here uh, indicated with the delta. So this will be my delta, my, my price variance now is, okay. The tricky part here is this, which is the sum X and now uh, what I'm doing here is I take the price change, the, pri the price change for every product, multiply this by the actual quantity, okay? And I just check this, is this only for the active products? So not new or discontinued. So that's why this if here, okay? But then I sum this up because we said for the price change, you need to sum up aggregate everything from the product level to all of the uh, hierarchies above that. So that's why you will use sum X here and you will sum this by the product table. That is why it's important that you have a nice, uh, very, very simplified um, star schema here. here. So uh, a table, that is completely separate, a dimension uh, completely separate for the products, okay? So this is the important part. And then you do the sum X and you will get the delta price. Um, then the uh, delta volume is actually in the end, very, very, very simple. It's completely straightforward. For the, for the volume change, uh, sorry, volume uh, uh, variance is simply, um, you simply uh, do the change, calculate the change in the quantity, all right? And then multiply th this by the price previous year. And this price will be on a level of, um, you do not do the sum X here, okay? Because then on the level of a subtotal, this price will already be an average price, okay? And it's all hunky-dory. And then you do the same thing uh, with the mix, you do exactly the same thing as, as we did in Excel. Just take the total variance, take the total variance. This is my total variance here. I just called it delta previous year. So delta previous year, where is it here? It just simply, you know, the total variance revenue this year minus revenue uh, previous year. And uh, so I take the delta mix and just simply subtract everything, everything, subtract the volume change, price change, new and so on. And this is then my mix. So it becomes in the end very, very simple. And now how can you do that? How can you now use this? Uh, it works really nicely uh, with the Zebra BI visuals, of course. So this one, this is the Zebra BI charts visual, okay? Um, there is one more thing here because you have, you will end up with a lot of separated measures here um, in the end, uh, right? Uh, and for charts and tables and so on, it is better that you just simply collect collect the measures in one single category. So that's why I actually have another table here. Where is it? It's here. I just called it PVM. 
and it's a so-called disconnected table. Okay, so this table, you see, it's not connected to my data. It's a simple, it's a simple table. Let me show it to you. It's a simple table where where I actually just list the um, values. Uh, so I have one, two, three, four, five, and these are my categories for the charts and and tables and so on. So uh, the first uh, element uh, in my PVM table is my revenue from previous year. Then I have the price change, volume change, mix, new, discontinued, and revenue. And I'm actually using two uh, short names and long names. Okay. And now I'm using a switch statement, switch statement, just to transfer the value from certain from those measures into this um, table. Okay. So you see, this is now my uh, categories, and now the revenue is a switch statement. So my 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 revenue by price volume mix, right? The value of the price volume mix, uh, I simply take I simply take the switch, and for the first element, which is revenue previous year, right? In my table, you know, I just take my revenue from previous year from my measures. So this is just a way how to unpivot. Um, all the measures and put them into one dimension. So then, in the end, you can just take, uh, you know, you can just create something like, you know, take a chart. So zero bi chart, for example, and um, just take your um, categories, and just put them into category, and you will get everything on the axis here. Okay. Um, okay. Or you take a table. This is the Zebra BI table, and this would be all right. So the, the changes by product, but then you can again take this category field with all the different uh, changes, and you you can do the grouping, you know, to just to, to get okay. This is my price change. What are my top products here for the price change? Okay, um, or you can do it uh, here again with the same chart. The categories on the axis, and then the product group is in the uh, it goes in the group field. Okay, um, it's the last time for for the questions. Um, uh, Tine, do we have some questions? Um, yeah, well, Andre, I have to say we had a quite a li uh, lively discussion. Um, <laughs> so um, I would use this opportunity to thank you, everybody, for 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 posing a lot of great questions um i did my best uh, answering all of them uh but yeah maybe i would i would uh, kind of put out maybe a question or two um so first joe wanted to know if it's possible to include subtotals subtotals in a waterfall chart um maybe i can answer this one uh, yeah joe um, you can definitely do that um yeah. And not only that, it's basically extremely easy with Zebra BI Visual. Yeah. Um, Great. I, would... yeah, I can actually show this, Tina. Maybe, maybe just, just good. Perfect. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Yeah, because when you first start, so how do how do you actually create this from 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 scratch? So just just try to recreate this, right? So you take the uh, you take the Zebra BI Visual. So by the way, uh, this I think works even in the free version. So uh, the basic version of, of Zebra BI is available for free on the App Store. So you can just import the visuals. Uh, but uh, but then uh, certain features are uh, only available with the license key. But um, let me just explain this now. So I'll drop in the categories and use the you know my calculated. So basically, first you get this right. So this is the column chart, so these are different charts, but this does not make sense. The only chart where, where this analysis makes sense is actually the, the, the waterfall chart, okay? So, and then you go here, um, you see this is already my revenue, this, these are all my changes, but this is the basic waterfall chart just stacks up the thing. So what, what you need to do is right click and mark it as a result here. And then the last one, you also mark as a result. Because these are my fixed columns, okay? And this is already it's done. And now to your question for the subtotals, um, if you have some subtotals here in between, 
you can again mark it as a result, but of course my my calculation does not have the subtotal, so this will look weird now. But you see again, you can just start another one. So you, you have a subtotal here, and then again you go on. Okay, so you can basically have as many results as possible, and also you can uh, invert certain rows. So for example, if you would say the discontinued, if you would define the the, the uh, discontinued category as a positive one, like, okay, we have discontinued 50,000 um, uh, products for 50,000 revenue, and you would have a positive number here, then you, you would actually be able to invert it on the chart by simply clicking invert. But it's also the other option, but I already, I already, um, um, I already did this in my calculation for the discontinued products. Um, I just multiplied it with uh, minus one. I hope this answers the, the question about subtotals. So just uh, yeah. right click and mark it as a result, no unlimited number of times. Per perfect, Andre. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot for this demonstration. Then I think we have a really, really good question from Eftimios. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. Um, he would like to know if it's possible to get profits into the analysis. Uh, yeah. And he comments, price is okay, but profits are always more important. So I think this absolutely. is a very good question. Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. Thank you for this question. So I have mentioned that on, in the beginning. I mean, doing this analysis uh, on on the profit is like 10 times or, or, or 20 times more valuable, right? And you can do exactly the same thing. So let me just go back to my original um, uh, thing here. So because you know and actually you can do both it's best that you do both because you will see all right i mean you can increase the prices and your revenue may go up but if those products that you are selling and they have higher prices so it looks all hunky dory right you have increased your revenue but maybe exactly with those products where you increase the revenue you have actually decreased your your profit margins okay so you can think everything is great, but your profit is going down. And if you now just do the thing, um, so instead of just taking the revenue, just take the gross profit, okay? Just to quickly, uh, can I just spoil this uh, file quickly? So, you know, um, for example, if I just had my cost of goods sold here, at, for this year, for example, then I can just uh, calculate my gross profit. Okay, and this would be some number, right? So uh, whatever it is, like, okay, this is the, the, the let's say 80,000, and then I can calculate my gross profit uh, is my revenue minus this, or you simply bring in your gross profit if you already have it like gross margin or contribution margin, as it's also called, or gross profit, right? So do it like this, and then do everything exactly the same, exactly the same, with the only difference that you take the gross profit instead of the revenue, okay? So, but you will need the gross profit, and then you will also need the gross profit from previous year. GP, gross profit from previous year. And then you just, you know, uh, just forget about those two and do everything from the gross profit. So you need the gross profit, quantities, prices, everything the same. But the interpretation will be the same. So this will not be the, the, the price, but will be average gross profit, gross profit per unit, which is, uh, yeah, just uh, profit, profit per, per, per unit. Okay, uh, perfect, Andre, thank you um i think yeah maybe we can address one or two questions since we are already a few minutes over 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 yeah over. we started uh yeah. five minutes uh later so now it's one hour let's let's take two more maybe yeah so uh yeah maybe there were a question or two uh regarding the the kind of uh definitions and uh here maybe what i would answer that if you look online or into the lit literature there are tons of definitions and yeah we totally agree that there is not one 100 percent correct approach uh but yeah at the end we kind of need to decide to go with the one that was presented today um, yeah maybe your comment andre 
Yeah, thanks, Tine. I mean, there are um, people are using different definitions. Um, many, many of um, uh, many of the influencers that are doing this are are trying to following the the, uh, the pure math logic, right? And there, there's always different logic, and uh, but the interpretation uh, can be very, very different. And also, we have seen a lot of different uh, approaches. And uh, I actually, after studying all of those um, approaches, methods, I actually quite firmly believe that this method is, is actually uh, works best because, for example, I mean, uh, the, 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 major, uh, the major change um, is in the, in the mix calculation and in the approach how to handle the, 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 the volume, uh, volume changes, right? So the, the price is not, price is always the same, but there's the difference. But um, the one that I show, that I have shown first, where you always have some, some mix calculated uh, and you calculate mix with the mathematical formula and we can have a, a, a theoretical discussion now, you know, which formula is better and, and, and so on. But in the end, I think this is much, much better uh, because the product, it's, it's, it's a business, this, this solves business uh, problems and, and answers business questions, right? And uh, the business side of it is, this is a product portfolio and this is a product mix, okay? And if you're selling, this is a very good example here. So for example, product one, product two, are all uh, constitute um, a product in my baby food, um, baby food um, the product uh, group, right? So now I have this table and I have calculated my prices and then I have price change, volume change. They are both positive, right? And now you see on the level of the product, I don't have any mix, right? And you should not have it. So I'm, I'm fairly, I, I, I fairly, um, uh, fully endorse this way, this method. Okay, and this is also what, uh, what the official, for example, Controller Academy I mentioned, you know, they, they also teach this method, right? Um, so there's no, there can't be any mix. It's not defined on each product because there's no, there's no change in the structure. It's only one product. It does not make any sense. But where, where you come on the, to the level of the baby food, of the group, now a weird thing happens. So this is my price change will add up and will always be the same. But the volume change will slightly change here because now I know what was the uh, volume, the pure volume effect here, but also a part of that will move to the mix. And this mix is negative here, okay? Why? Why, what is this telling me? This is telling me that negative mix is telling me that we are now, although we have um, good products that prices increased and we sold them more, but my mix, my portfolio uh, this year uh, is actually uh, worse than last year. <laughs> okay, why, how come? Because obviously the only explanation is we are this year on in baby food, we are selling more products that are cheaper. Okay, and now this is, this would be much better now if I had the gross profit, okay? Because, you know, in the end profitability is a, even better measure for that but uh and you, if you see this so we are selling cheaper products and if you see this you will understand because my product number one baby food number one uh the price was 8.3 and now it's nine and the product number two went from 1.6 euros to 2.1 euros so price change they all grew the prices grew but we sold much more this year. We sold much more, um, uh, much more uh, product number two, which is four times cheaper than my first one. Okay, uh, than than uh, uh, than last year. Okay, so this year I have eleven thousand versus fifty thousand, and last year I had nine thousand versus thirty one thousand. Okay, so in terms of percentages here in the baby food, we were selling much more uh, in the structure of my product mix. We were selling much more product number one, which maybe 
uh, or probably is more uh, valuable with higher prices and hopefully with higher margins, right? I, I would need the gross profit now, but uh, to have the final answer, but that, that's it, right? So that's why I have this mix here. And this is, the, this is now an uh, additional information for a business manager, okay? They will understand that, okay, we actually have a, a worse portfolio and now we can go back, go down and see, you know, uh, which products are, are here and so on. And this is especially important uh, when you're analyzing profit, uh, gross profit uh, for this. Okay, so you will get this mix on, on the, you know, on the subtotal and you will get it also on the total. Right, but mostly this is important for, for the groups, then you can see which groups are the portfolios oh. changed. Okay, perfect, Andre. Um, maybe we can take one last question. Uh, there, there were a lot of additional popping up uh, as we started this Q&A session, but unfortunately we will have to. <laughs> yeah, to let's, let's take one more and, and, and uh, then yeah. we'll follow up with emails and uh, maybe we do then another, another more, more detail. So this was the, this was the introduction. So uh, yeah. uh, to explain the formulas and so on, and now you can do a lot of stuff. So maybe, maybe we just do another one uh, later on. Perfect. Maybe I would close with this one from Giga, and he wanted to know if it, uh, if if there is a change. For example, if you look uh, on this PVM uh, from the perspective of customer by product um, to see the effect per customer. Yeah, that's also a great question. Um, yes, you can do this. So I, I I have it. I have something similar here. I have it by by country. Right, so for example, I can this I can do this now by by anything. So you can start with the product. Uh, these are my products, and then all the aggregations of in the product in the product um, uh, product dimension. We saw that, okay. So all the product groups. This is all aggregation in products. But then when you take the uh, when you take a country or uh, you, you said customers or customer segments, right? And it's the same thing, like like it's it's another dimension. It could be it could be it could be another dimension. It could be business unit or something completely different. So I have this. I have the country, and I do it. I do it here, and you see, I also have this by country. Okay, but this is now not. So the important part is you can have. That's why I said it's important that you have a star schema here. Um, okay, just forget about this one. So. The important thing is that the calculations are done on the product dimension. The way that I explained, um, the way that I explained here uh, in my formula. So you can have your countries, segments, customers, or other you know data tables and link them to this fact table. Uh, it will work great. Uh, the only thing that is important when you calculate um, when you calculate the price changes. Okay, you have to do the the sum x by by the product uh, dimension. Okay, and then those products will you know automatically get um, um, calculated for certain customer segments or business units or or other dimensions that you may have in your model. Well, perfect, Andre. Uh, I guess we have to stopped at some point so um there are uh, i think we could have this discussion for another half an hour but yeah unfortunately um yeah we have to yeah, stop have. so I, I will leave you to to kind of a close close this session but yeah from my side uh thanks for a lot of great questions and again thank you everybody for attending this session yeah, thanks everybody. I would just like to say um, uh, many people were asking me about the files and templates and so on. So, so the files with all the formulas and uh, and everything are uploaded already. I think hopefully uh, during the webinar. <laughs> and let me just show you uh, the the resources. If you go to our website zebrabi.com uh, under the resources, we have um, a Power BI examples uh, page. So just select this Power BI examples, or if you go directly, this would be zebrabi.com slash PBIX. And um, we have we have some some of the, our best demos here. And as you can see here, 
This is already the analysis that I was just showing right now <laughs> in, in Power BI, and you can download the PBIX file. Okay, so you can you can just go here, download the file already right now, and then in the uh, uh, webinar recording, uh, we will send you the webinar recording. You will also get uh, the the files with Excel and uh, all the uh, source data in Excel. So the whole package is a, will be available um, um, in, on the recording page as well, and you will get uh, you will get the links. We'll we'll send it to you uh, via email. So. Uh, so yeah, this is it. Uh, we are preparing new new webinars uh, quite soon. Uh, and another uh, great thing is uh, uh, coming out uh, next week. So maybe if you subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on the LinkedIn, uh, you will get the you will get the news as soon as they are out. So so we'll we'll, we'll have a lot of great resources uh, in uh, in a in a couple of couple of days. Uh, like this. So follow us and see you at our next webinar. And thank you, Tine, for handling the Q&A. It was a pleasure. Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys. Cheers.